There has been no group of stocks hit harder lately than these semiconductors, seen as losers on all sides of the trade fight. Dominic Chu back at CNBC HQ with just how much the chips are down. Well, chip crash, semiconductor slump, whatever you want to call it, Brian, it's been tough sledding for the industry overall as it remains firmly situated in the whole U.S.-China trade war story. Now, it's pretty clear how much the trade headlines matter to chip stocks with the Vanek Vector Semiconductor ETF, that ticker SMH, now down around 18% or so from its record high that we saw back on April 24th. Even with that decline, though, it's still up around 13% year to date. Among some of the more well known larger cap SEMI names to get hit this month, you've got Intel, which is down just around 15% for the month of May. Broadcom is down around 20%. Same goes with NVIDIA. Micron is down around 21%. And Qualcomm, the worst performing stock in this ETF, down 23% or so, driven lower in large part by that federal judge ruling that it acted with an anti-competitive manner with how it charged licensing fees to certain customers. Now, an honorable mention here to advance micro devices on its stock surge today as some traders get more optimistic and bullish about AMD's newest slate of chip offerings. The move means AMD is the only stock in this ETF that is positive on that month to date basis. Just one final point with regard to the negativity in technology. Apple, not a straight story about U.S. China trade, but it still becomes somewhat of a proxy of those headlines. Brian, it's down around 16% since its intraday high back on May 1st. So Apple, chips, China, trade, it's all one big clump. Back over to you. Yeah, it's all one big clump that has been compressed inside the bag. Dominic Chu, thank you very much. All right, Karen Feinerman, let's yeah. trade this. Uh, any reason to own this group? I Fundamentally, we'll get to the technicals in a second. Well, you got to really believe, I think, in a trade deal. You got to really believe in a trade deal soon, I think, actually. So, uh, I don't know. That seems that could happen. I think there's other better risk rewards. It's come down a long well, way. I just know, said a couple of days ago, we're, quote, not ready. Not ready. To make a deal. Right. That doesn't make me really excited to jump in. If I had to, maybe, maybe I'd own some Cisco. I don't know. So if you, if you look at semiconductors, they're down 14% against the S&P in 23 sessions. Um, it tells you just how much the market is pricing in. This also comes after uh, Q1 earn, Q, Q1 earn, excuse me, uh, where we heard from Texas Instruments, we heard from Intel, we heard from a handful of guys just how cyclical and how cyclically bad the sector was, at least for a couple more quarters. You th that's, that's independent of a trade war. That was based upon inventories and restocking and, and ultimately where they saw their business model. So um, if you look at the drawdown in the first quarter of 2018, really into the second quarter as we started to get the first announcements of trade war, this drawdown from the highs 23 sessions ago has exceeded it, and it tells you that I think you could go lower. I agree with Tim. April 24th, Texas Instruments report, stocks trading 119. We said, I said, shocking that the stock is actually higher on the back of this quarter. Major double top, now here we're at 103. But that came on the heels of Micron saying similar, and obviously Intel saying similar as well. So I agree with Tim. I think, listen, trade deal, no trade deal. There are other headwinds going on right now, which means these stocks go lower yeah. from here. I think AMD proves, though, today that there's some special situations. I think Qualcomm could be really interesting. Back in April, we know when uh, Qualcomm settled that deal with Apple, signed a six-year licensing agreement, getting paid by Apple also to settle this dispute. Stock went to 90 bucks. Now here it is back at $65. We know why. Dom just mentioned that FTC suit. I think there's some, some probably interesting entry points not too far from here, somewhere near. Listen, the time. average price target on Intel, 37 analysts. The average target's 53 bucks. Stock's at 43. So either the analyst community you have to start bringing their estimates down or someone's going to have to come out there and get more bullish on the name. All right. Well, your next guest says the worst may be over for semiconductors and it could be time to start dipping into the chips. Chris Verone, head of technical analysis at Strategus, is going off the charts for us at the Plasma. Chris, give investors in this group some much needed decent news. Hey, Brian. Yeah. So listen, I think what's notable about uh, the semis here is the change in attitude among investors so quickly. And let's just look at the chart here. This is the SOX. This is the uh, ETF. I think we need to remember that V tops are very rare in this business. It's only a month ago the semis broke to really new all time highs. They've had a sharp drawdown, but we have them back at support near the 200 day moving average. And I think what's most important when you look at sentiment, Put volume has absolutely surged. This is a record in put volume, so people betting prices lower. That's a contrarian signal. Uh, this is a record. We think we're pretty close here to some type of a tradable low. 
And I think when you look internally uh, at the group, percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average is also very washed out here. Under 10% of stocks in the semis above their 50-day moving average. So again, we have them back uh, at support. Internal conditions are as washed out as we've seen since December. This can take a couple days or even a couple weeks, but we think we're in the ballpark of some tradable low here. Now, what names in particular really flag uh, in our work? This is TXN. Um, I think the question here is, is this just some big top that's taken shape uh, over the last 18 months? I don't think we know yet. And I think what we do know is with an RSI near 30 and right back at the 200, we can at least play for some type of a bounce here and evaluate the character uh, of that bounce. Then we look at a name like an ADI, which is, frankly still, uh, which is still, frankly, a very strong trend. It's been lower left to upper right, really for the better part of the last couple of years. You have a 30 RSI, so oversold, again, back at the 200-day moving average. I think both of these names, TXN and ADI, are two we can take a shot on uh, on the long side. What we're skeptical of, though, are stocks that are in established downtrends that never made new highs uh, earlier this year. I think the best example of that is NVIDIA failed right at the downward sloping 200-day moving average. So the trend here is still down. The 50 remains below the 200-day rallies and downtrends you sell. So I think be selective here. Texas, ADI OK. Be skeptical of uh, NVDA. Chris, come on over. Thank you very much. Good analysis there. You saw, guys, I mean, that, that SMH was sitting right on the 200-day moving average. All those technical indicators maybe worth a little bit of a gamble here. Take a chance. Well, if there's, a play, if there's an entry point to Chris's point, 200-day moving average is as good as any. My pushback would be, and Dan has mentioned this, these things don't typically last a quarter. These slowdowns typically last anywhere from four to five quarters, and we're in quarter two of a slowdown. So I think there's further room to the downside. Yeah, you know, I'll just mention this. I mean, a lot of people are waiting for these things to fall into their lap, mm -hmm. and you may just get them the way you, you know, you, where you don't want them. And I think that Nvidia is looks like if that goes back to those lows from January. It is lights out for this group. And just the other thing is, is like, listen, if Apple is the last battle that's going to be fought in this trade war, how do you think they're going to absorb those tariffs initially? They're going to push it through to their suppliers, right, and squeeze their suppliers. So I think the semi space. I think you want to be very careful here until we know that we have a substantive deal. I think the call here is when we look at how big tops take shape, it's typically not a V. You don't get very many V-shaped uh, tops in this business. And we have a condition now where sentiment, I could even just tell from the desk here, has changed pretty dramatically on this group from just a couple months ago. And when you get these huge spikes in put volume, you have to at least entertain the idea that there's another side to this trade. They've hit these things hard over the last month. We know that. <clears throat> but 10% of stocks above their 50-day, that's about as washed out as we've been since December. I at least think you get some type of tradable bounce here. So let me ask you earlier when I said Cisco, I yeah. meant to say Intel. Intel here, that quarter was awful, yeah. but this stock hasn't, I mean, this stock hasn't been here in a long time. Certainly this valuation, what do you think? You know, I, I think the Does it matter? problem with the stock together. is the stock's been pretty awful for a long period of time. I mean, uh, we've been consistently wrong, frankly, on Intel uh, over the last number of quarters. Every time it looks like it wants to bounce, it's been pretty disappointing. I just think there are better opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like an ADI is a stock in an uptrend. That has had a good shakeout back to support. That's more timely. Chris, quickly, can the overall market move up if the semiconductors do not? No, I think what's curious here is you have the overall market down four, semis down 15. I would be really curious if semis actually start to outperform even if the broader market gets hit here. That would tell me a lot of bad news has been discounted in these really broken groups. I think the jury is out on that, but it's certainly top of our radar in terms of what we care about.